I'll figure to show this. Uh, I just popped the drain screw out. And you can already see it's coming up brown, which is not a good sign. Uh, it's definitely milky brown right there. Uh, let's pop the vent and see what she gets. You ready? Of course, I got the wrong screwdriver. There we go. Let's just start to flow now. There she comes. Brown as the dickens. Yeah, it's... You see it's mixed? There's a good, there's a good picture there. <laughs> so the brown is the water and the uh, the clear on the left is the oil. Now what'll happen is if you run it, you run the prop, you move everything, then that will converge and it'll be a nice solid brown color where they say milky brown. So there is water getting in here. Uh, you can actually see the, the it's like saturated on the bottom there. So good chance maybe this is spaghetti seals going. This doesn't look like it's lining up quite right. So maybe they messed up the spaghetti seal or they hit something. They hit a rock here. You never know. You know, they're, they're rob boards. Look, you can see the oil blowing out the back here. Maybe they, uh, you, know, you never know. So this will get a seal replace. We'll replace the seals in this since I'm getting better at seal replacing. I don't like doing it, um, but I'm getting better at it. And it's not scaring me as much. Uh, it's, the seals are, you know, they don't pop. They're tricky to get out. And now I'm, I'm starting to add tools to my collection. I got the seal puller there. My vice is, is becoming useful. So I'm, I'm not as scared. The shift shaft seal bushing, I bought. I finally found it online. I'll show you that. That one's really cool. It's really hard to find part. And uh, so the seals don't scare me as much. And uh, we'll, we'll work on that. So. Okay. Okay, so I couldn't wait. <laughs> uh, it was 3 a.m. and my home was charging. My family was sleeping. So I had to dive into the lower unit of this 10 horsepower. And like I was uh, assuming, just clean. Clean, no stripped bolts. If I can uh, ask or pray tell, talk to any viewer out there, the one thing I could ask you to do is, if you have an upboard motor, is please store it inside. Storing it inside just makes all the difference for you and for the future owners, if there ever will be one. I know it's like, oh, F them, what do I care? But trust me, if you ever want to keep a motor, even for a week, and you just want to carefree maintenance, or you want to bring it to your mechanic, and he doesn't say, hey, listen, I had to replace this because it was broken and all messed up. Shift rod seal came out. Actually, no, the shift rod didn't, didn't put it out. So I was saying in another video with the 30 horse, you pop the shift rod out. Of, uh, usually you flip the, skeg, the thing upside down like it is now, like they both are right now, and you pop it out that way, but this one's the other way. So sometimes the bushing needs to be popped out vertical. Sometimes it needs to be flipped upside down. So here's the cool Evan Rude removal tool that took me forever to find. And I had the bushings right there. I've shown, I've, I've shown this before. Yeah, so taking it off was just the, this is a skag of six bolts. They weren't even tight. They were kind of loose. One, two, three, four, five, six. The typical four uh, on the leg. All right, actually, they're here. Typical four, one, two, three, four. Uh, because it's a 10 horsepower, the fives and the sixes, you gotta pull the power head to get the lower unit off. The 10 horsepower, I'm assuming, and up has the plate. You just disconnect the ship linkage. Easy peasy, finally, easy peasy for the first time ever. Okay, then, <clears throat> okay, so we have to reseal this motor. This one's got the plate. Okay, these plates are expensive, you don't wanna crack them. So it's in like this. Uh, you don't wanna pry up on it because it goes in deep. So you have a, a high potential to crack this plate. Uh, what you can do is, this is from uh, Brandon's garage. He takes the water pump housing, puts a screw through it with the four nuts, like here, grips it like this, puts a wrench on it, and turns it. You turn it, it breaks the seal loose. A lot of times you can wiggle it up then with a screwdriver, pop right out. Uh, so getting that seal out is gonna be the tricky part. Uh, we're gonna try some stuff with that. That's well, the reason we took this whole thing apart was to get this seal out of this plate without breaking the plate, which is excellent shape. Uh, the gears, it had water in the lower unit, but you can see the gears are clean. There's no grease anywhere. Uh, I've checked the clutch dog is in excellent shape. The seal cup or the seal carrier or whatever, that's in the worst shape of all of it. But, I mean, it's reusable, but it's got some chips and I'm having trouble getting it off the prop shaft. I have to bang it off. Uh, and then that's the seal that's got to come out of the prop shaft. I think this is where the water was seeping in because everything else looks pretty tight and nice. Okay, so 
Just, just, and you can just tell that's the difference. This was kept inside. All the other motors were either kept outside or kept on the water in salt water environment. Makes, makes my work a million times better. One in every 20 motors I get is, is, is easy like this. So. Uh, but happy, happy to tackle it and clean it up and make it look pretty. <clears throat> so that's the lower unit. I just got to pop the shift rod seal out now that I can bang. I couldn't bang at three in the morning. Where is it? It's right okay, and then you could just do the 516 thread of rod. If you don't have this removal tool, I did it with the 30 horse. I've done it with plenty of other motors. It doesn't get any easier than the shift rod bushing. <clears throat> don't let people complicate and tap and screw and pull out. If it's got the removable skeg, flip it upside down and bang it out. Or keep it right side up and bang it out, however, whatever you got your motor in there. Boom. Seals out. Bushing's out. There you go. Bushing comes right out. Threaded rod. It might stick to the uh, the thing a little bit. Don't worry about it. And the old, the old o ring slides right off. Throw that away. And we're done. You just clean up the material on the inside there. Put the new seal o ring in. And then pop this thing in. Tapered side first. There's the tapered side in. That goes in first. And then you could use the socket to reinstall. This is supposed to be a, an installer tool as well. You just flip it upside down and push the other way. That's the lower unit on the 10 horsepower. And even on the nicest motors, just sometimes you get problems. This is why I was always afraid of doing seals. Uh, I think heating it up is the best course of action before you start. I tried banging it out through the other side. My screwdriver kept popping through the metal. Uh, I tried everything. I got it in the vise now. The seal puller didn't work. Pulled right up on it. So I'm going to heat up the outsides. And then worst case scenario, I'm going to beat it to heck so bad that it'll just cave in on itself and it'll come out. And bada bing bada boom, it's out. It's that easy. <laughs> you guys should have seen the fight I was getting. Actually, I think the seal had a chrome coating around it. A chrome shell that is still in there. Seals out. And I'm just going to wiggle and play with it and make sure. Not the plate itself right now. And like I said, it's just a thing, so I can kind of bend it out of the way here. Okay, so, wow. All right. Again, I was scared. Don't be scared. Yeah, it's a pain. It is a pain. I cannot believe how hard that was, but it's not, it's going to come out. It can't stay in there forever. Worst case scenario, you break the plate, you pop a hundred dollars. Don't be scared. Don't be scared like me. Don't be scared. We're going to throw the new seal in while we're here. And this is uh, the gasket root, uh, ever ceiling comp gasket ceiling compound. Brandon's garage does it all the time. Should make the uh, X stall. A little easier. Of course, I'm having problems. Here's the old plate. <laughs> Getting the seal in was crooked. I tried to pull it out and broke the plate. Expensive. Expensive break. So this one was on eBay. Look, it was relatively inexpensive. Uh, most likely because it's dirty. But uh, if I'm pitting, but it'll work. And that's it. So the seal's out. Now I can get the right one. Put the right seal in. Start sealing this thing. I'll get this thing right together. The projects are starting to mount and starting to run out of time. And things aren't progressing as fast as I would like. All my videos are getting backed up. And I don't want to lose the couple subscribers I've gained. Finally hit 350. That's awesome. I'm trying to get to 1,000. And I get a bunch of projects so I don't to help. And a bunch of projects all get stalled in the same freaking time frame. So I'm working, trying. Thank y'all for sticking. Picked up some 
makeshift rod seals. So we can put that in. one of the kits that come with it. Triple guard grease. And on around, very tacky stuff. Stick it in the hole. Bevel side down. You can put gasket sealing compounds so that it doesn't, so it comes out easy. But they come out easy no matter what. Okay, so bang your bushing in. If you push too hard on the O-ring, it'll expand, and then your shift rod won't go through it. Like now. Okay. There we go. Okay. So the shift rod bushing is in. Nine times later. Next we can do is the pleat. So I found a way to use the slide hammer. Uh, you stick the, the, you know, the puller in there. And slide hammer it out, stick it in the vise where it grips. Kind of tedious and annoying. Seems to be working. And the reason why the seal puller is not the best is because that's what happens. It blows past the outer ring of the seal. It doesn't grip it. Or it does, it's just it's, it's in there good, so... That ends up happening, which is fine. We'll get it out. And then every once in a while, a squirrel gets a nut. That's amazing. Not effective. It hurts. But it comes out. And I just re, I, I re uh, inserted the jaws and gripped it tighter, a little bit lower. And just work, 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 work. Bang, bang, bang. Probably 600 smacks. And hopefully I didn't ruin the carrier in the process because I had to get the price pretty good on it. Right there. So, yeah, I got mad. Started to tighten up on the vise and I chipped it. Chipped it in spots. You can see where the teeth grabbed. They make vice things, I don't have them. We're gonna see. We'll put this together, see if it slides on the prop shaft right. If it does, we'll reuse it. Doesn't look awful. Uh, I think the more important I think the more important part is the inside. So we'll see. But the seal's out. Okay, let's finish sealing this bad boy up. So the seals I had in the kits were slightly over the outer diameter. So the new seals, they fit really, really nice in where they're supposed to go. You could see how the they were close, but they just looked bigger. And that's why I broke my original plate, because I tried to put a too big seal in it and I couldn't get it out. In any case, got them. Let's finish this thing. So, cleaned up the, this is the kit for this 10 horsepower, the 59s. There's only a couple that fit. So that's the Sierra number, 18262. Gasket. Gasket ceiling. I'm trying to hurry this project along here because we want to get some motors out. I'm in the middle of redoing the carburetor. That video is going to be coming out. It's done. I'm going to start getting these motors on the water because the season is here. The season is here. Rush now. Breaking in, but. It's done. I'm sick of staring at these things down in the cellar. Okay. And volume. That's it like that. Alright, now I gotta put the seal into the plate. Should have did that first. There's two seals that come with the kit. I believe they're the same. They are. My gasket sealing compound is still viable here. The other side of it. Some of the older seals don't have the spring you can't see. It's got this metal ring on the inside of it. So just know that that tapered side goes in towards the oil. Last time it went in 
crooked on me. Uh, I don't like my steel installer tool. It's not, it's flush, but the, the mounting, the, the spot to hit it on is not. So I'm, I tend, oh no, for some reason I'm not getting it. It's not going in on the one side. Start it with the hammer. Cause I got a, you know, there's a big flat hammer here. And then maybe you can get your installer tool or socket and push it, and it'll go in. Make sure. Make sure the plate is on a flat surface. You can't break the plate if you're only hammer in here. Don't put it in a vise like this, because then you could punch through the middle. And now that my seal is flush with the plate, I'm gonna bang, get a socket and bang it. Okay, seal in the plate. Clean up the bottom of your plate. Try your best to line your holes up with your gasket to start. Take your water pump mounting screw. So just get uh, so good four screws that fit. Make sure they they thread into the holes. Uh, just to make sure your your gaskets in place and you can just push down and make sure that doesn't move until you're ready to install it, your water pump Put your new rubber o-ring around it. Uh, you could coat this in grease if you wanted to Or 3m or whatever you got lying around A new seal. And do the cup. Oh, it's hard to get in perfectly. This part, that side's out a little bit more, so I'm going to just tap it on that side. And I mean tap. I saw it just get straighter. Uh, it's more straighter. It's less straighter. Tap in on the other side. Okay, that's better. But it's best we're gonna get it. You can kind of give it your whack now. It's pretty straight. Now, once you're flush and straight, then you can get your installer or oh, your socket. You want a nice clean workspace. Trying to work in something like this is just not efficient. Uh, that's not bad. So it's flat, it's flush, it's good. Seals are installed with the exception of the spaghetti seal around the skeg, skag, whatever you call it. Comment below, what is it called? S K E G for skeg, crappy skeel, or skag, S K E G. K-A-G, or is it S-C-A-G? I could Google it myself, but why Google it when I have so many sexy followers now? Okay, first we're gonna stick our shift rod through the seal. Then we're gonna take our drive shaft with our gear, pin and gear attached. Some of them have a keyway. Some of them have a keyway. Some of them don't. And then we can slide that on through before we get ready to put this gear case in. So that should go right down. Be careful not to damage your seal you just installed. 
If your pinion gear is not attached, mine is like kind of stuck there, you can feel free to just slide the pinion gear in there before you put the gears in. But the pinion gear, make sure you put that in. Otherwise, you're gonna have to take everything back apart. And then we can put some gasket sealer in there. You don't have to, I've seen it done before. And the guy who does it is pretty professional, so we're gonna go with that. We'll be using the black stuff today. I'm just putting it where the, uh, that rolling piece, the shield carrier, where that's touching. And you can also slather it on the lower portion here. That's nice. And now let's put our bearing, our assembly together in it. Uh, very simple. Gear. Don't forget your race. There's a, not a race, but uh, okay. There you go. Yeah. Don't forget your thing. Uh, put your sh put your clutch dog in first. Okay. And then your shift grid will go over that. And then you got your gear. There's a metal. Another another washer, thrust washer in there. There's a a, a, a oiler bearing in the middle there. Then your seal cup, seal in it. Funny story in that video. Your O-ring, and that's it. This, this is the simple gear case. That's, that's literally all there is to it. And then you gotta line up, there's a hole in the bottom. It's a hole, and then I believe this one does not. But this piece should be facing, this tab should be facing straight down. So, and there's a notch in the bottom for that. Let's do that now. Line the holes up. And it'll, it'll, you'll feel it go down. Is that possible? Mm. Line up your holes. Shift the cradle. Ouch, that hurt. Uh, once all that is in place. Okay, spaghetti seal. Uh, put some 3M in this guy. So it sticks. So this stuff is super, super tacky. So dab will do you. And we'll just stick it in here. Oh God, it's already leaking. I'm not even squeezing. I'm not even squeezing. I'm just letting it come out from opening the cap. I don't even think you need that much. Because this stuff gets tacky quick, man. It's almost impossible to work with. I'm just trying to put it in there. I don't want to do what I did last time and put it on this outside. I'm going to use something different for that. That should be enough to stick it in there because this stuff, it starts to get all stringy. It's like, it's just impossible to work with, but it does the job. You should always have this on hand though. A lot of applications. 3M, 40, 3M. It's probably made of Teflon, which is super bad for you. Crazy documentary on all of that. And now when we stick our, you can already see it webbing up. <laughs> Ridiculous. Let the ends hang out there. Stick it in so it doesn't move. This 3M is just so ridiculously over the top. And then get your good snips, which I finally found mine. Not much, but a little bit hanging over there. So there you go. Actually, I am perfect on the other side already. That's, that's what you want. All right, and then we're just gonna pop the skeg on and then we're gonna try to line up that pin. Not the pin, the little Phillips screw that you're never supposed to touch. Before we pop it on, we're just gonna hit this section with the sealant. Didn't wanna hit the screw hole, but whatever. Time 
I'm not gonna put a bead. I'm just gonna put a thin layer because it's not it doesn't have an applicator. It's not really meant for this. I'm just gonna get aggravated. I'm just gonna hurry this project along now because the longer I take doing this, the longer I take to get in the barrel, the longer it takes for me to upload anything. And I'm getting aggravated. My viewers are like, this guy's boring. I've seen the same job over and over again. Uh, we'll try to keep it interesting. Uh, eventually, I'll stop doing the videos on how to do all this because it's been done before. But I haven't seen a 10 horsepower gear case on YouTube yet, so here you go. Right, I'll put it through and pray I remembered everything in here. in the wrong direction. And we're gonna use the camera lights here. Okay, the seal kit comes with a little rubber O-ring. Little rubber O-ring that goes around the screw that should not be made, which you're never supposed to touch. If there's an old one on there, pull it off. New one goes on. Don't forget that. Let's see if I missed it. Okay. And just take a shift rod to see if you missed it or not. Pull up and down. Let's see. Spin the gears. That's how you spin the prop shaft. So gears are turning. Full in the gear shaft. Gear should not turn. Okay, then we're just gonna screw our scat, our scat bolt in one, two, three, four, five, and I'm gonna check the shifter. Okay, guys, so that'll do it for the lower unit seals on the 10 horsepower. Uh, we will get to you next with a carburation video. That'll be part whatever. Uh, thanks for watching. That video will be coming out very shortly after this one, trying to get these videos out. So if they're long and a little bit tedious, I, I do apologize. But at least we got projects and we're working on stuff. And I will get these motors running and on the boat as soon as possible. I promise. Working on my, my truck. I have a wiring problem with my truck. My trailer light won't light up. And it's a wiring problem in my truck. Uh, anyway, next video will be carburetor. Uh, after that, uh, we'll do the water pump. Maybe we'll do the carburetor and the water pump. Same video. And then we will get it in the barrel. Thanks for watching. Uh, we'll see you guys when we complete this project. And then uh, 30 horsepowers after that. Blackout Bill, thanks. Sub up, guys. Love you.